So this talk is about uh, secret sharing, in particular the, about uh, threshold secret sharing. So let's define them. So a secret sharing is an object that allows to take a secret message and share it. So you get n shares S1 to Sn. And the two most important uh, properties of, a, of a, such a tool are uh, row reconstruction, meaning that every set of uh, row shares can join together and reconstruct the original message, and then uh, tau privacy. Tau privacy means that any set of tau minus one parties, if they join together, they have no clue of what the second message is. So those are the two basic properties. So we consider this thing called tau, raw, and threshold secret sharing. And of course, the optimal thing is when tau is equal to raw, this is uh, like usually called a, a tau of, out of n secret sharing. But of course, also the setting in which tau is strictly smaller than rho makes sense. And this is some, sometimes called in literature, uh, literature as a ramp secret sharing. So of course, there are two, these two properties, but uh, we can think also about also new property. And uh, there is this uh, very nice uh, work about, uh, Go, uh, by Goyal and Kumar last year at stock, and they introduced this notion called the non-malleability. So what is a, a non-malleable secret sharing? So imagine this uh, attack scenario in which uh, uh, we shared our secret message, we get the share, then adversary come, the adversary decide a tampering function and a reconstruction set T, and the tampering function is applied to the shares, so you create some tamper shares, and then the adversary get to see the reconstruction of the tampered shirt. So you get to see this uh, uh, tampered message. And now the non-malleability property say that the privacy of the original message is, uh, uh, is maintained even if the adversary get to see this mallet uh, uh, message. Of course, we need to put some restriction. So the first restriction is that the adversary cannot uh, send the identity function. So when the identity function happens, so of course the reconstruction will give you the original message and then the privacy cannot, be, uh, cannot hold. And in this case, we see to, say to the adversary, look, I cannot tell you the message, the message is the same as before, it's, I mean, it's the challenge message, I cannot tell you that. Uh, of course, uh, then there is another case, so maybe an adversary can come and send this uh, uh, tampering function which reconstruct the shares, add plus one, and then reshare. Now the reconstructed message would be the message plus one, and this, of course, is something that uh, again break the, uh, the privacy of the original message. And in this case, we need to do something here. Uh, what we do uh, is to uh, uh, limit the class of tampering that, uh, that an adversary uh, can, uh, can do. So there are many ways to limit this class of tampering. In this work, we're gonna consider the individual tampering model. In this individual tampering model, uh, what we do is that the tampering function is uh, uh, um, div divided in n tampering functions. So each fun tampering function will act to one share, in one to one share. So, okay, so what are our contribution? Our contribution are the following. So assuming one to one one-way function, we get a, uh, a normalable secret sharing with the following property. Uh, unbounded polynomially many tampering uh, uh, pro, uh, security, which means that uh, if you look at the, at the adversary of, before, uh, of the, uh, at the security experiment of before, the security experiment of before it was a one-time experiment, but of course you can naturally generalize the experiment in a, in a uh, uh, many, many time tampering, and in this many, many time tampering, what happens is that adversary can a tamper function, you get to see a message, then you can decide yet another tamper function, and then you get to see the message, and, and again and again. Uh, so we get unbounded tampering. Uh, this is uh, unbounded tampering is sometimes called the continuous normalability. Then we have the property of adaptive concurrent reconstruction. Adaptive concurrent reconstruction is the following uh, property. So as I said, the, um, the adversary can uh, send a tamper function, but actually it can also select uh, the, the, the reconstruction set. And now we can allow the adversary to select the reconstruction set adaptively. And, uh, wait, wait. Then our scheme is also uh, noisy leakage resilient, so the adversary can leak partial information about the shirts. And then the rate of our scheme is uh, one. So the rate is the uh, ratio between the, uh, between the message and the maximum uh, share, and this is equal to one. Okay, so uh, 
this is the related works. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go through all the row of, uh, of this table, so let's just concent uh, uh, concentrate ourselves to the last row, our, uh, our, our paper. So we have a lot of nice, nice property, as you can see, and uh, the only difference, the only thing that distinguishes us from the related works is that we need to assume one way function while all the other works are in the information theoretic setting. Uh, if you think about it, uh, uh, actually, uh, this thing, uh, it, it, the, po the point is that uh, uh, the, 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 we need to assume one-way functions because one-way functions are necessary to get continuous normalability. At least they are necessary when tau is equal to rho. Of course, we have a tau uh, which is smaller than rho, but uh, this is a kind of an indication that it's very hard to do this kind of thing without computational assumption. Uh, so, to go back to the definition, in the definition I say that uh, the adversary can tamper many, many times, but at some, time, at some point maybe the adversary send a tampering function, and this tampering function uh, is too bad, uh, and then there is no message that can be reconstructed. And in this case, the reconstruction say, like, look, error, I cannot, uh, I cannot say what message was inside of this uh, shirt. And in this case, we need to cut the oracle access to the adversaries, or we need to self-destruct. Why we need to do that? Because otherwise there will be an impossibility result. So it's not possible to do uh, continuous normalability without self-destruct. Uh, again, uh, so we, are, we also want to have uh, leakage resilience. So the kind of leakage resilience that we consider is called the noisy leakage uh, model. In this noisy leakage model, the adversary can leak uh, parcel information about the share, and the only restriction on the, uh, on the function that he can send is the following. So the only restriction is on the con average conditional mean entropy of the shares given the leakage. This thing has to be high enough. So let's go to our construction. Uh, I'm gonna show you our construction uh, with pull rate. So we want to do a T out of N secret sharing, let's start with uh, the simplest case. So the simplest case is a two out of two uh, continuously non-malleable secret sharing. Uh, so we want, we want to do this thing, and actually they already exist. So uh, after, uh, a two out of two continuously non-malleable secret sharing is just a continuously non-malleable code in the split state model. So we know already how to do them. We know we can do them uh, from one way function. This is this work of uh, Ostrowski, Persiano, Venturi, and Visconti of last year here at Crypto. So we have them. So the technical part, all the technical contribution of this work is the following. We start with a two out of two continuously non-malleable secret sharing, and we obtain a tau, tau minus one, and continuously non-malleable secret sharing. So if you wanna, uh, so this is the take home of, uh, of this paper from the technical part. Uh, so let's, let's try to do them. So let's warm up with an example Let's try to do a two out of two, uh, a two out of n uh, continuously normalable secret sharing using a two out of two non continuously normalable secret sharing. So what we do? So let's look at this matrix. So in this matrix, each column is a share. Now it's empty, and then uh, it's, uh, each row is, will be indexed by a couple of indexes, and we're going to compile this matrix. So what we do? Is we do a fresh share of the message that we want to share. And then there is the first index, the, in, the first index will be one, two, and we put the share one in position one, the share two in position two, then there is one, three, so share one, position one, share two in position three, and so on and so on. And we continue to fill all these matrix. Now, if we want to reconstruct, suppose that we want to reconstruct using uh, uh, the index two, three, very easily. So two, three, they define a, a, a row in this team matrix. So we go to this row, we pick these two shares, and now we reconstruct them. Easy. It, it's really also um, easy to, to show that this thing is uh, continuously no, uh, uh, non-malleable. Basically, it's just an hybrid argument over all the row of, uh, of this matrix. But uh, it's easy, but not super trivial. In fact, already for this case, we need to assume a property from the uh, inner, what's going on? a property from the, uh, 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 from the inner two out of two uh, continuously non-mumble secret sharing. Uh, so what is the point of this slide? The point of this slide is to show a very uh, basic principle uh, of secret sharing in general. So if you have two secret sharing, let's say that one secret sharing has an access structure equal to A, 
the other secret sharing has an atlas structure equal to A prime. If we do this composition of sticking together the row, then you get a, another uh, uh, secret sharing with access structure equal to A union A prime. This is a very basic uh, principle, uh, all, although you can agree on this. So keep in mind this, uh, this thing. Uh, so let's now give uh, another secret sharing. This secret sharing is gonna have a weird access structure. Let's look at it. So we're gonna call it this thing, the building block uh, secret sharing. So the building block secret sharing will be, we will do the following thing. So we sample a key, then we share the key and we get to share S1, S2. Then we use this key and the message to create an authenticated ciphertext C. And then we do Shamir secret sharing of the ciphertext. Now the, uh, the value tau for the Shamir secret sharing will be set to be tau minus two. And uh, I kind of can convince you that this thing is uh, continuously non-malleable. The idea is that, uh, so the, the key is well protected uh, because it is shared using a continuously non-malleable secret sharing. So the key is not in the view of the adversary. And now the adversary gets to see a ciphertext, but this is an authenticated ciphertext. So it cannot uh, uh, manipulate it in, in, any, uh, in, in any way. And then we use Shamir to get privacy out of uh, this scheme. So now what is the access structure of this uh, 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 of, the, uh, of this building block uh, secret sharing. So the access structure is the, uh, the access structure A12, uh, which is equal to the, all the set of cardinality at least uh, tau, which contain the index one and two. Okay, I think I'm going very fast. So uh, uh, let's see uh, how to do a, a, a uh, tau out of an uh, secret sharing. To do that, uh, so we basically do the composition of before. So we sample uh, uh, a secret sharing using the building block uh, 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 secret sharing. And so we get two share for the key. We put here the first share, we put here the second share, and this is the Shamir secret sharing. Then we do it again, but now we uh, uh, permute the, the index where the, with the uh, so this is a fresh secret sharing. Uh, uh, we permute the index of, uh, uh, of where we share the key. So the key will be shared in the index one and two. And then we continue with this, uh, 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 with this procedure uh, until to fix, uh, uh, until to uh, uh, complete all the, uh, all the matrix. So now what is the access structure of, uh, uh, of uh, this secret sharing. So the, the access structure of each row is equal to A, one, two, uh, two, three, and so on. So the access structure in total will be the union of all the access structure. And if you do just, uh, if you look at this thing, you will uh, notice that the access structure of this uh, secret sharing is actually the tau out of n access structure that we are looking for. So this seems good. So you will think, okay, let's uh, proceed as before. Let's do an hybrid argument over, I showed you that each component is, con is continuously non-malleable. Let's try to do a, 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 an hybrid argument over all the possible row. It seemed that this thing would uh, give us a continuously non-malleable secret sharing, but actually there is a problem. Okay, sorry guys. I didn't tell you how to reconstruct. So how would you reconstruct? So to reconstruct, Let's suppose that we want to reconstruct using the, uh, the index uh, one, two, three, and then. So what you do, so you pick the minimum indexes in the set, so this one and two. Then you go to the row one and two. Now you can do the reconstruction of this key, the reconstruction of the, the, the ciphertext and the crypt. So this is the way we, we do uh, reconstruction. And so as I said before, there is a problem. The problem is that, uh, 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 so I will show you the problem. So suppose that the adversary want to reconstruct using one, two, three, and then. So now suppose that he, 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 he tampered the share, and actually he can tamper the share, he can transfer information from uh, this part of the share over here. So you can really transfer a lot of information. And the point is because the reconstruction here is a linear function. So you can really leak a lot of information about this share here. 
So we cannot proceed with the hybrid argument because we want uh, to resource to the continuously normalable uh, property of these two shares, but uh, here there is some leakage. So we cannot do that. So what is the easy solution? The first easy solution is, you know, let's assume that this secret sharing is leakage resilient. Now it's leakage resilient, yeah, there is some leakage. It seems this thing to solve the thing, but the problem is that uh, uh, this will only solve the problem uh, uh, partially because we can resort to leakage resilient only a bounded amount of time. Instead, we are looking for unbounded uh, 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 normalability, uh, so that we need to do something more. Uh, the extra trick that we use is that we do reconstruct the Chamis secret sharing in a different way. So instead of using the classical Lagrange interpolation, we use something which we call twice reconstruction, double reconstruction. So let's see what double reconstruction me, uh, means with an example. So let's suppose that we want to do a five, a five out of uh, n uh, secret sharing. So the threshold is equal to uh, five. And instead of setting the, Stramil, the Shamir's uh, threshold to be three, uh, uh, will be because it will be five minus two, we set it to uh, two, so it will be five minus three. Why we do this thing is because we need to have extra space for this uh, double reconstruction. So what we get is a, a threshold secret sharing with parameter five for n, so five reconstruction and four privacy. Uh, so let's suppose that adversary comes uh, and send a, a tampering function and a reconstruction set one, two, three, six, and then what we do is that, okay, one and two are the minimal indexes uh, in this set, so we use one, two to reconstruct the secret key, and then we want to reconstruct the ciphertext using the indexes three, six, and then, and what we do is that we divide it in two sets, we use the set three and six, and the set six and then, and we do twice the reconstruction. So uh, we can do this thing because we set the threshold appropriately. So we have, we reconstruct once and we get a ciphertext C. Then we reconstruct another time using the, the, the indexes six and N, and we, we get the, the ciphertext C prime. And now we check this thing. So we check that the ciphertext C and the ciphertext C prime are, are the same. If they are, not, if they are not the same, then we send an error, which means that there will be a self-destruct. So now why this thing uh, uh, works, basically the thing is the following. So uh, as, as I showed you before, uh, uh, before the attacker could leak information about S132 uh, here. So it could transfer this information and then thanks to reconstruction, it would leak information out of a tampering uh, uh, query. So, now we need to show that uh, this kind of thing cannot work, cannot happen. So to do that, we show that the average conditional mean entropy of S132, given the leakage, meaning the reconstruction using this, the, the, the indexes S123 and uh, tampered uh, S126, uh, uh, doesn't give us any information. So to do so, we use this equation. So the contrary of this equation, we use the fact that uh, uh, if the reconstruction is good, if, the, if, the, the, if there is no self-destruct, then C prime is gonna be equal to, C is gonna be equal to C prime. So now we need to bound the average conditional mean entropy of S132 given this leakage. Uh, but you see here that this leakage is independent respect to, to uh, the S132 because we are in the individual tampering model. So those are different indexes that refer to different shares. So if, even if you manipulate them, you cannot get any information uh, from S132, which means that the average conditional mean entropy S132, uh, it, it didn't drop, it's, it's still the same. So uh, this thing cannot make any leakage. Then of course, at some point, uh, C will be uh, different than C prime, so this equation doesn't hold anymore, but then, uh, in this case there will be a drop in the conditional uh, average mean entropy, but this thing happens only once. It happens only once at the end, when we have the self-destruct. So in that point we can resort to the leakage resilience of the scheme. Uh, okay, so we did it. So the main trick 
that we use was this composition of our, our building block secret sharing and then reconstructing twice semi secret sharing. And also there is yet another trick that we needed and I, I don't have enough time uh, to explain it, but basically uh, is a property, is, is a easy property of a polynomial interpolation. If you want to know more, you, you can ask me offline. So uh, to conclude, uh, so in our paper, we, we have this scheme, and then I promise you to have a rate one uh, continuously non-malleable code. Actually, that scheme is not rate one, it's rate zero. Uh, we have a rate compiler that take any continuously non-malleable secret sharing, which is rate zero, and it amplifies the rate to be rate one. Then we have an application to threshold signature with local adversary. And then uh, we have a follow-up paper that uh, is gonna appear at TCC uh, 19, where we uh, close the gap, so between uh, reconstruction and, 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 um, and, 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 and privacy, and we also have a different model of uh, tampering, like the joint tampering model. And that's all. Thanks. We have time for questions. The microphones are at both ends of the aisles. And if there are no questions, let's thank the speaker again.